Welcome to the Some Laugh Podcast. It could be like, oh, that was some laugh, or there was, there was just some laugh. Some laugh. <laughs> well, no promising all laugh. No, <laughs> it's, there's going to be some. It's some laugh. General thoughts? I love it, man. They've never failed me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm some... 29 years old, white guy from Britain. I fucking love yeah, the Arctic monkeys. Big monkeys fan. <laughs> it's some different, I suppose. What did you think of it, Steve? I like it. I felt it was like an extension of Tranquility Base. Yeah. And I liked it. I really liked that album. So I, I liked it. I was kind of, it took me a few listens to get really into it. There's, there was the odd tune that I wasn't sure about. And there's it's quite funky as well. There's some, I don't know what sort of wah, wah guitar, bass, wah, wah guitar sort of shit. Let me ask you this. On. See if you were to define the genre that that album was in, what would you say? It's tough because it kind of spans quite a lot of genres. Yeah, cause yeah. There's Cause like violins, jet there's... skis on the motor. I'd say is almost like soul, and then there's like sculptures of anything goes. Is like electronic, kind of like uh, industrial, Dark, industrial. Yeah, it's all over the felt place. Felt like a Lynchian <laughs> fucking soundtrack. Did it? <laughs> yeah, that that is what I would say. I thought about it. Is it sounds like the soundtrack? Do you know what the bit I love in it the most is? See the last like two minutes of that Big Ideas song. Oh man, that's great. Isn't it? It's like sounds like something for the fucking Godfather or something. Yeah. Like yeah. Well, and he's it's... obsessed with like films and soundtracks, and like I think he just really wants to be a director. Really. Aye. Um, Has he ever so done anything like that? Whatnot, to your knowledge. No, I mean he did the soundtrack to Submarine, but that's about as close. The I think he's kind of sitting by the videos. phone waiting for someone to uh, give him Hollywood money I to t- a film. Tell you what, really, I listened to his interview the other day with that Zane Lowe guy. Mm. I fucking yeah. can't go him. Man. I'd love to have a Zane Lowe in my life that is just absolutely wanking me off constantly. <laughs> just every single thing I'm saying, he's just like, "Bro, that's crazy." Uh, yeah. And he's been doing it for like twenty years now. It's so just, like, cringe. Wanking them off. I've only ever really heard the interview. Uh, Alex Turner and Kanye West. <laughs> and I think... He'll pretend to like anything, Zane Law. Aye. As you said, it felt so disingenuous, didn't it? But yeah. also, I liked that Alex Turner was kind of stumbling over his words and stuff like that, but that, I, I liked that, that he just, he's such a fucking poet. He and can't form a sentence. Music, but he can't form a sentence. No, he's more and like I a shit identify podcast with guest. that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know when you hear that, sometimes I'm editing this and I hear the fucking shit that I'm spilling on my <laughs> fucking hell. And I don't even write amazing songs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do for the podcast. You do, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Thanks very much. You do soundtracks. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I love it. Yeah, a friend of the show, friends of the show, CMB and Liam, their uh, podcast, enjoy an album because yeah. Liam's in hospital. I did a record with CMB yesterday talking about the album. So if you want to hear me wank on about the Arctic Monkeys in a Zane Low fashion, yeah. you can. <laughs> I know because it's it's weird for me because I'm like, I love them as well, but I was like. Uh, when I listened, I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And then I was like, <laughs> I, "I was like, I felt the same as you, but it's basically just like another tranquility base." But the whole idea behind that last one was like, "Oh, we're kidding on with like a lounge, a Band. lounge singer in space." And I'm yeah. like, "Are no, you still a lounge singer in space?" <laughs> yeah, because it's what is this a concept album about a car? Or no, it? it's just called. I wouldn't call it a concept because it mentions a car in a lot of the songs. He, he said in that interview, he goes. I just thought the the oppor- I would have hated myself if I didn't take the opportunity to call something with the car because <laughs> nobody's ever called something like that before. <laughs> it's so bog standard. It's funny isn't it? when the music's that complicated and it's just like a yeah motor. the yeah. motor that be your <laughs> I think like the only thing because I, I I do en- it is good like I'm not saying it's shit or anything I, it's good I enjoy the stuff. <laughs> you but can it's think just, it's shit, okay? No, it's just a different. No, because I'm listening. I've been listening to it more, and I'm getting into it the more I've been listening. But I think I'm just always wanting another fucking AM pure. Mm. You're the basic of, bitch. I'm uh, the basic. You're not bitch. alone in that. Yeah, I know. AM's there. You can listen to. It. Well, we were talking about that on the way up. Like, what's your rankings of the albums? And I was probably basic bitch. Like AM yeah. might be the top. Maybe the it's bit, popular for a reason. I mean, it's not like it's, you know. Yeah, it's, it's got great. bangers yeah. after banger, but. I think there was a lot of good songs on it. Hello You felt like one of their most sort of would be like their commercial single or whatever. Yeah. I think Body Pin. Or Body Pin. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like I think that like slides straight into like the into the set list of classics, that one. Yeah. We've been talking about it for weeks though. Every time you pick me up, people are like, Oh, what'd you think of Mirabel? And then what'd you think of Body Pin? And what'd you think of this new one? And then all the album is yeah. like it is kinda like I know it's not exactly that cool to be like, oh, my favourite band's like the biggest band in Britain. But yeah. like, there's sort of one of the only bands now that when they release an album, people are talking about it for ages. Like, yeah. I guess you could say like Coldplay's big or whatever, but no one even knows when they've got a new album. No. Like. No, because they're, it's weird that they're still, they're mainstream, but they're, they're not like, 
like artistically he's doing whatever he wants yeah. to do pushing he's, the boundaries. he's pushing the boundaries he's not just pandering to any old stuff because he easily could have made the same album AM2 would have sold shitloads that but even yeah. like his first album whatever people think i am what was it say i am, say I am that's, that's what, what i'm not, not. like that they could have just kept making lad tunes like that and just mm. and but they decided to go i find it really inspiring creatively yeah i mean it is in like if you think of where they came from what like, they could have just been another fucking razor light or some shit like some yeah. band that have just i like what is it they call it indie Land fill. Landfill. indie landfill and they've went on and they're doing this mad stuff and they're still yeah. evolving but and i, hate I wish it was just the odd one or two you could go like all right that's the fucking bang us are chorus boys <laughs> I, yeah that, you know is, is that too much to ask <laughs> but then when you... which is the name of an arctic monkey song <laughs> <laughs> but it's then funny you... to me when when you have because this argument has been going on for like 13 years now since they did humbug and you're like yeah. come on like come on we're all on the same page now we know what to expect it's going to be different every time it, yeah. it's a tedious conversation to have i think that's true. Yeah. and they, it was their mission statement straight the gate like the name of that first album first line in it's you know anticipation as a habit to set you up for disappointment and then d- they do that song who the fuck are arctic monkeys where they say you know like we're never going to compromise we don't care yeah and, like they've been telling us the whole time yeah. and yet people somehow 20 yeah. years on haven't cottoned on to, to that yeah, idea that's true yeah but i'm a basic bitch musically because i i tell you what the, the main thing that i'm into musically is probably i'd listen to more hip-hop than anything else so see with so, bands i'm very i'm i'm a pure layman basic bitch when it comes to bands i don't really know that much about them so the arctic monkeys are one of the few that i actually listen to Aye. well uh, they're one of the few that would like yeah that appeal across the board like that. yeah yeah i'm the same i'm more into hip-hop and stuff I would say. but like i arctic monkeys are that class because we grew up in the streets stevie the mean streets no, I but um, right, so anyway, we'll move on for this tedious conversation. I, I could do another hour on it if you want, but I just <laughs> I've spunk my load on enjoying an album. Hi. Um, so, Steve, you have been in the process, and now I believe I've just got your your feet in the door of moving house. Yeah, yeah, but bought and paid for, not paid for before the mortgages all went up. I believe. Just is this like the worst ever time to buy a house? But yeah, yeah. Uh, but we got in just <laughs> just before that time to so, run. We, like I was saying in a few episodes back where I'd bought a fucking couch from DFS and all that stuff, the first flat we were meant to get fell through. Now we've got a new flat, a couple of streets down the road for the original one. And because we'd got that original mortgage for that first flat, we got in just in time. Right. So, a bit of luck. A bit of luck there. And you were not enjoying painting at all? Oh God, fucking hate painting. (laughs) Me and Catherine almost split up about four times. <laughs> just arguing about painting and stuff like that. Uh, we're we're fine now. Don't worry. What's the that. most stressful part of like the getting the house together with the painting? Is it the painting or what about it? What about the painting? Oh, it's it's causing the problems. Steve's actually not a professional painter. I'm not a you know professional that, but... painter. <laughs> neither is she. And it's it's hard. It's hard work. This is what I don't like about the painting thing. You know how like you do get a joiner in to put up. A kit, make a kitchen or something, uh-huh. or you get a plumber in, or whatever. Is that a joiner? I'm waiting for you to put up, make a kitchen. <laughs> do, you make, do you make a kitchen, son? A wood. Can you make a kitchen for what me? What an entirely flammable kitchen, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you get someone like that, a professional in, but you get professional painter and decorators, and everyone's like, I'll do that myself. How hard can it be? It's fucking hard. Yeah. It's tough. Takes about three coats to make it look good. It's still streaky as shit. You don't need to tell me. I, I remember doing that face paint last week for the, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. for the mask. Yours That's the, the other thing we'd always talk about whenever Steve picks me up in the car is what's the new Arctic Monkey single like? And then it, for like the last three or four weeks, it's like, God, this painting's killing me, man. <laughs> he's, like a, he's like a detective that's become obsessed with the case. <laughs> Can't stop thinking about it. Even when he's out of the house, he's thinking about the painting. Ah, um, it haunts my dreams, man. You're off the case. We're getting a fucking painting on decorator. In. <laughs> he was clean shaven when he started. <laughs> I went, and then you find paint everywhere. I've got no socks now that don't have bits of paint on it. Yeah, we we pants that are all covered in paint. Horrible, horrible task. Painting your pants? <laughs> it seeps through. <laughs> seeps through the the clothes. Uh, and then yeah, you need to hang up. La- lamps <laughs> <laughs> ever heard the phrase lamps <laughs> hang up lights you hang up lamps well hang up light shades and all that stuff I'm not a handyman guys no you've never claimed to be to I've be never fair. claimed to be but see when you set up a, a, a flat pack 
furniture. Mm-hmm. I feel that's I've never felt it more of a man in my life All after right. looking up even this wee table sitting here. If I built that, I'd be looking. I did build that. that. I know. And then, it's, it feels like a sense of achievement. Wow, that. Brilliant. I'm I looking followed at that. the IKEA instructions to the T, <laughs> despite the uh, example seven was a wee bit confusing. Exactly, because the <laughs> instructions are confusing. So it feels like a sense of achievement. And I'm just sitting there, like, look what I've built with my bare hands. This table, I know. that's what it feels like. It's interesting because obviously that's very that seems like a very adult thing. Or I'm, I'm you know adult, and the way I use that well worn phrase. But often what people are calling adult stuff is effectively just consumerism, isn't it? It's just buying shit and then putting it in your house. Yeah, exactly. Filling your house with shit. And now it's easier with Amazon and stuff. You can just you don't need to go out to a shop. You just order things and it comes the next day. Yeah. So it's it is easier, but. Uh, one of the things about the, the flat because people say it's very hard to get on the, the property ladder I've done it guys it's easy easy peasy easy and he's pulled peasy. that ladder up from underneath him ah you're only getting anything <laughs> uh, can I come stay in your spare room oh uh, you could you could spare you room that's a flex mm. uh, it's not spare it's got a desk in it. Uh, come and sleep in your desk please <laughs> <laughs> and in one of the wee drawers um, all you need to do if you want a tip to get on the property ladder guys all you need to do by a flat in the grounds of an old mental hospital. <laughs> you did mention this as well. <laughs> Nature's discount. That. That's all you need to do because no one else wants it. Put down a down payment on the fucking haunting of <laughs> Hell House. Or did you literally? Did you get money off it because of that? Nah, but just I don't think there was a Always lot interest. of interest. Yeah. We how spooky people. would it need to be to put you off? I don't know how much I believe in ghosts. Obviously, we spoke about yeah. this. If there was proof, we're becoming a very ghost heavy podcast. <laughs> this is the new ghost podcast. I don't know if there was like literally, I could see a ghost with my own eyes. Yeah. I probably wouldn't live there. Okay, all right. Well, that's, the how, that's all I'm asking. How yeah. has your partner been dealing with the concept of it being haunted? She's all right with it. I, I think she was put to rest. Her mum was like, oh, "Did you just get? Did let me ask you this." Did you just get a priest in to exercise? No. <laughs> a lot of people do that. Like with the houses, like still, like, like I think my grand on it when she moved into her house, she got a priest to come along and bless it. So is it really? Yeah. I, I am. I'm, I'm so actually that surprised that you're. She is very Catholic. I'm she's... surprised she didn't get that done. No, she's no. <laughs> no she's, that was best. Describe her as very Catholic. I don't ever see her that. Yeah, she is. she is very Catholic. She is very <laughs> it's Catholic. A funny description. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, she never got a priest in. I think that's a, it's not the fucking exorcist or some shit. No, but that's what people do. Fucking will be do. if you don't get a priest in. Next time in this podcast, my wee head will be turning in my wee circle. <laughs> uh, no, she she was kind of put at ease. Her mum was like, your building was actually the administration office for the hospital. Right. Which is nice. That's... Kind of, admin ghost. Because I could, I could, I could deal with an, admin I ghosts. I could batter an admin yeah. ghost. A wee specky guy who's good at Excel. Easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking batter that wee guy. That's fair enough. However, you could go down the route of saying receptionists at like your GP surgery or ho- hospitals are the worst people alive. That's true. Imagine rude dealing, ghosts. Rude ghosts. No giving you the time of day. <laughs> then a Ouija board with one of those ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> but it's your symptoms. <laughs> Can give you an appointment with the main ghost? <laughs> <laughs> what colour did you paint the walls? Misty white. Misty white? Yeah. Same colour as you. Is that so you, <laughs> is that so you don't see the ghost? So you just blend in? <laughs> <laughs> misty white. Cause How white is misty white? It's just like off white. So Everything's kinda... off white, isn't it? Yeah. Which is boring, but it's, they say you shouldn't paint it. We kind of went a bit crazy. We painted the kitchen green and the bathroom blue. Just For some split. Glasgow balance. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Partick Thistle spare room. That's, that's where the, I'll be. That's the office. Red, yeah. red and yellow stripes. <laughs> <laughs> what have you guys been up to? That's my news. I've been on set. Yeah. Can Working. you talk about that? No. Probably not. No. Met Jackie Bird. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Can I tell you this? Have you <laughs> She's sound, man. Say, Well, I guess I don't need to say in what capacity I was working with Jackie Bird, but let's just say I'll be working with Jackie Bird. She's the she's the chefs in a pub in the West End now. <laughs> <laughs> Has she been bumped off a uh, Hogmanay shows? And oh, she just, I think she's just First kinda... question asked her. Jackie, have you been bumped? What's going on? <laughs> she's sort of seen stopped doing them, didn't she? So what's, how's that been? Yeah, it's been really fun. Long days, fun though. Yeah, just having a laugh, man. I've I got no stories. I'm just like a tired guy. No. But, um, yeah. 
good fun. It's funny when you're like a couple of years ago, I was hiking potatoes and then I'm like running in to give lines to Jackie Bird. For her. <laughs> <laughs> so can you just do that a bit differently, please, Jackie? <laughs> I know you've been in this business for 30 years or whatever, but. Yeah. I had a weird thing when I was growing up, right? Well, every night when the news came on, obviously Jackie Bird is presenting it. And for some reason, me and my dad would always go, Oh no, not Jackie Bird again. <laughs> every night <laughs> for years. Just because she was on every night in the news and it was like a running joke. Yeah. And just I don't really know for what it's reason. A good bit. But it's a good bit. just to be like, that's all we would say. I used to be like a wee guy in the BBC who, if guests came in, I would take them to the studio and that. And you always seen Jackie Bird like just getting ready to read the news. I'd been from like eight in the morning. She does like the five o'clock news. She's there getting ready to rehearse and all that, and like the entire day, she's that's yeah. that's that's like an eight hour shift. Yeah, she's like the Roy Keane of news. She's first on the training ground, last off <laughs> every blade of grass. Fair play, yeah. It must be uh, hard though, cause did you see that footage of um? So you know Nadine Doris, who was like mm. Boris's pure like the MP that was always put back in him. So she stood in for Pierce Morgan, uh, on his like mad talk show thing, and she pure fucked it up. Oh, really? uh, so, you know, she's a fucking Welcome mad freak. to Piers Morgan doors. Uncensored. Coming up on tonight's programme, for a change, a man who is going to clear up a woman's mess. That's Rishi Spar as he enters number 10. As, as you were, soon next stability extends to the cabinet with the big beef steak and all her cages, but Bradman back at home in the home office. Sorry, I've just completely messed up. <laughs> <laughs> we're in our studio and we've risked them for a clue stick around for just stop oil live what is, is what is happening here is she just just a woman struggling to read she just can't read she's fucked the autocue basically oh, really aye it's a lot it is a lot harder people slag than over on looks. burgundy but he was a fucking pro he was <laughs> it would be tough I remember see when we done that mid Riverside show hang years ago on fucking STV oh, have you got a clip of that STV Scotland I probably do have it somewhere actually what was that show uh, the Riverside show do you know honestly I probably could get it up but basically I remember like watching them that was the first time I'd probably seen them they reading for an autocue and I was like god and it's like they seem so professional and then it would just Bad at doing, and I'm sitting there like, oh my god, must be a real skill too. Because, yeah, yeah, if you start chasing it like she was there, you're fucked, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that was like our first ever TV. We done the blether, and then we done (laughs) on ST the the short lived Edinburgh one time. Yeah, it was like STV Glasgow. This was why did they even make that channel? Man, essentially, the the blether was like um, comedians in cars getting coffee, but yeah, in a shite restaurant. Who and you didn't get we we done it in what was that place? We done it in the record factory. (laughs) Oh, really? And uh, right, the yeah. West End. And we just kind of spoke to each other. It was just this. It was like podcast. Oh, there it is. Do you want to watch it? I mean, you're on the Riverside <laughs> show. It's just filmed off the telly. Aye. Yeah, <laughs> I actually think it is filmed off the telly. Love right, it. so this is me and Steve's appearance on STV Glasgow's uh, The Riverside Show. And I've even got the date, the 16th of June, 2014. Before, before I'd started comedy. Fucking hell. We were on the telly before the telly. you started, Stu. <laughs> Now, have you been watching our new comedy series here on STV Glasgow? It's The Blender. The idea is two men, usually comedians, grab a cuppa and have two a blender. Two and women need not apply. Uh, surely, <laughs> surely that was two comedians, usually men. Or is that what no, she no, said? She said two men usually come in. I know, but is that <laughs> uh, actually to be honest, the both only thing ways set in stone is it must be men. <laughs> <laughs> both ways seem. Oh, it's 2014. It was a different time. <laughs> it was a different time. time. <laughs> it was eight years ago. <laughs> that is wild, man. What a weird start. Right, here we go. And sometimes be well. It's interesting. If you haven't seen the show yet, take a look at this clip of tonight's episode. She's, She's saying that through gritted teeth. You can actually see my love room in the background. <laughs> this is so copied for comedians and cars. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I've told that story on a recent episode of this. I was going to say, this is going to be stories you've recycled by now. It's just me looking uncomfortable as well. Then he tries to suck his own cock. <laughs> Show. Uh, firstly, when uh, SP Glasgow approached you guys about the blender, <laughs> <laughs> look at you. So, oh, good. God. so um, 
It's an interesting concept, just having a couple of guys like, just having a chat. Uh, <laughs> it's really a sign. Interesting an interesting concept. concept. Really good, so. A couple of guys having a chat. So even you say it has to be guys as well. That's right. A couple of days before, there's Mark that sorted it out. So throwing in at the deep end. But it was a good laugh. And you mentioned transcripts. There is, there is no Steve, you look older there than you do now. Maybe a wispy hair as well. It was the first time I'd ever had comedian on the money. Sit down, have a chat, and see what happens. Yeah, it's basically just us talking. This is it. A, a, a pause that a minute. Same. Yeah, pause it. What are we actually... Tell me you're not having like a five-minute interview about the, <laughs> the four-second clip we've just seen. <laughs> Talk about what a laugh so it was and what an interesting concept. <laughs> this is the promo for... Oh, for a different show. No, this is the promo this, for the blether. This is the promo for the blether. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what's the blether, though? The that blether was... That was the, the, the show that we were... Yeah, but how long is that show? Oh, the half Honestly, an hour. Oh, hour. right, Jesus. And that wasn't the whole thing. It looked like they had you on to... You did that one shite thing for like three seconds, <laughs> then you just dissect it for like five minutes. No, the, but the, I think the mental thing is, is we are having promo on like an STV Glasgow show for an STV Glasgow show that nobody watches, which is essentially just a long shite chat <laughs> of is it basically a podcast. So we're doing promo <laughs> for like a shite podcast. Hey, it's an interesting concept. <laughs> and we need to break it down and we we're going, yeah, so we just... Two guys just talk, you know, that's the concept. I mean, yeah, how long can you fill talking I... about the idea that two guys just talk? Yeah, it has to be guys, though. If you're just two guys talking there, you could just do it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it bit... What is it? It's literally this. Is this? Is this <laughs> Without you. Because you're a Because there's a woman. <laughs> do it, well, you know, it's an interesting concept. It's an interesting concept. <laughs> there's a weird one, so I can't even remember what was said. Hopefully it's alright. Hopefully it's alright. Look at that, I just looked at you like, what the fuck? Hopefully it's alright. Don't just say hopefully. For shows or whatever. Well, it's alright. Alex Turner and Graham Norton going, yeah, new album, The Car. Yeah, hopefully it's alright. It's an interesting concept. <laughs> and what did Steve as he said that? Hopefully That's a meme, right. that. How old would you be here? Well, this is, I'd have been 20, 23. 23 or Fucking 22 hell. or something, I would have been. No, I think that's enough. <laughs> Can't <laughs> watch it. <laughs> Amazing. Jesus, seminal. Do you know what? Do you remember who we met on that show? Who who was the other guest? Stu who? <laughs> no, 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 no. Jackie Brown. <laughs> right. yeah. This is us, right? We're on, as you say, Stu. We were two oh, guys. That? Yeah, we were yeah, two guys is... talking about. Two like, guys <laughs> talking about two guys talking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely nothing, right? The other <laughs> guest on that show that day was a fucking astronaut. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. He'd literally been in space. Yeah. What a crazy show this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my cunt for NASA was talking about his recent space exploration, and we we're talking about the blender. Oh, you went to the records factory. <laughs> you ever explored down that way? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, space out. Well, I mean, here's an interesting concept for you. <laughs> Two guys talk. We, we probably spoke about space in the record factory. I can't remember what we spoke about. I can't remember what we spoke about. I can't even mind. Two astronauts, usually men. <laughs> 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 we need to do a Patreon exclusive watch the blether like a watch along I think I do still have a cl- I've got it somewhere I think episode. yeah I think I've got it in an old hard drive or something my mum's probably still got it in like Sky you know, she's, <laughs> she's recording so. still got it in her TiVo or whatever the fuck it was that time <laughs> alright but anyway we've come a long Fuck way me. since now it's, now it's free guys talk yeah, yeah must no. be man <laughs> Only man. Last week we had Susie on. So That's true. Anyway. We're breaking we're barriers. Bu- we're, bu- we're bucking the trend there. Have you ever been on anything like that, Stu? Yeah, I was on STV Edinburgh, which is the same thing. But were you Edinburgh. talking about your was it, it was you and Cameron or something hosting it instead? Yeah, we had a show called The Gap, where just me and a pal would just say, I don't even remember what we speak about. It's an interesting, co- oh, it was a man. <laughs> interesting concept. I can't even mind it was to do with the Scottish Comedy Awards. So I was on with like Kieran Gus, and I was just like rabbit in the headlights, like just like, yeah. just started. Yeah. just like nothing to say yeah 
I mean, nothing's like changed. That. I still got nothing to say, but I'm more comfortable now. <laughs> at least, yeah. At least yeah. you can sit there in the silence yeah. comfortably. Yeah. Fucking live in comfortable silences, mate. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> no, I'm still saying nothing for half an hour. No feel a thing. <laughs> That's what, because I do like that as you grow older that you just kind of don't give a fuck anymore. I, yeah. But see, back then I was yeah. so nervous. Yeah, yeah I would trying be as to, well. Yeah. You're just worried about how you're coming, coming across. across. But also, you get more comfortable. Like being in front of a camera or being on stage and all that, because the more you do it, that was the first time we'd probably ever really been on camera or certainly been on the telly, even though nobody was watching it. That's yeah. when you want it to be, though. You don't want the first time you're on telly to be Jonathan Ross or something like that. Well, I, I remember yeah. thinking at that time, like, this is actually great practice because it's like a trial run before I inevitably go and do Jonathan Ross, and then it's been eight years later. <laughs> and I've, uh, the, only, the only fucking thing I've done is sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, is the gonna, telly. This is going to be bigger than Jonathan Ross. Jo- we'll have Jonathan Ross on our podcast. Yeah. We'll see if he's lucky. I've seen photos lucky. of people watching this on a telly, which always freaks me out. I love yeah. it. I want to see more. If anything, mm. I, I want, because I want to see it when people are watching it. In the living rooms or whatever. It's great. Yeah, I do the like idea of folks sitting around watching this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> three guys so much chat. telly out there, man. Yeah. I've not even watched off. Better Call Saul yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've not even seen Breaking Bad. It's not a hot take, but no, that's Breaking great. Bad. Breaking Bad or the Blether? What was your other? <laughs> yeah, those are the two choices. <laughs> The thing about uh, the blether, it really kept evolving. It's like Arctic Monkeys album. Yeah. So, uh, it didn't rest in its laurels, the blether. No. Always remember, pushing the farm. Do you remember? Because I was sitting there, I can't even really remember what we were talking about, but I remember one of the things that we were talking about because I remember sitting down watching it with my ma and thinking, this is fucking cringe. We <laughs> spoke about how we broke our VLs. Have we spoke about that on the podcast? Not Where not in this when. one, no. So I remember that was one of the things we spoke, we spoke about on the blender. Because the, the, the I remember sitting there, my mom was going, you, you're, a, you're not a VL. <laughs> <laughs> Shocked. Um, I broke my VL. Uh, VL is just crazy to me. That, did that, you, that was phrase. that a term you we said? We never used that. Oh, what that? did you call it? First kiss? Yeah. I think that's what they call it everywhere else in the world apart of here. So what, is that a Glasgow thing? Must be. Virgin lips, right? Virgin yeah. lips is Fucking a VL. Insane. It's absolutely crazy. <laughs> and you break like... your virgin lips. Yeah. When you kiss someone with tongues. Important caveat. Yeah. yeah. Two men usually. <laughs> Has to be two men. <laughs> Has to be very progressive guys. actually. VL. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be two men. Uh, I broke my VL. I've had my first kiss with tongues. When recently? <laughs> Very recently. Just the way you said it, you said it. You, it sounded like it was a new <laughs> I just, thing. I got the, I got, we got the house. And as soon as, as soon as you moved into the house, right, Steve, we can right. finally break our VL. Last lick of paint and then consummate the house. There's a wee ghost actually I started winching. Um, <laughs> now it was in a tent in in uh, summer camp. What age were you? Summer camp was formative for you. I was. It? Yeah. Uh, I you would and have your been dirty old pants breaking your VL. <laughs> That that was the it was the year after I think it was P seven so that's quite early on it yeah 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 so so. what was that earlier than me what would that be like twelve eleven eleven yeah that is too early this guy fucks this guy fucks this guy fucks man but well, the thing is it put me off it was such a traumatic experience it uh, put me off for about four years. Why? After Why was it traumatic? Because I didn't want to do it. I was egged. Up. The guy who stole course, stuff from it's, my... it's, a, it's a story from Steve's childhood. Of course, it was against his will. <laughs> <laughs> your, your virgin lips were taken from you without your consent. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Fuck sake. It was a. Uh, it was. <laughs> We were playing dares. Are you okay talking about this? No, there's a lot of bad memories coming back. We were playing dares. <laughs> Surprised they gave us on the blether. <laughs> Was the blether ever used in court? <laughs> so we're basically we're playing dares, and uh, tr- truth or dare, I think, and it. You got dared to get off with one of the lassies mm-hmm. there. And I refused, point blank refused, because I was like, no, I'm 10, this is weird. And then I went away at the tent, and then what the guy who stole stuff in my room, the the, the game, this guy's creeping up a lot. <laughs> this guy. This guy's He's like a... the, the fifth beetle, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> we should get him on one day. Just grill this guy. Grill him up to a lie detector. <laughs> the guy who stole the stuff in my room, took. We, I went outside the tent, he put his wee... Strip it hand around my shoulder and went, listen, just do it. And I was like, I don't know. And he was like, do it. 
So convince an argument. Dragged me back in. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard enough. No, I will do it, actually. <laughs> Dragged me back into the tent and went, get, you two get off each other. And, uh, this evil puppet master. Just... <laughs> it was horrible. It was disgusting. <laughs> she, did they, she didn't did... want to either. She was up for it because she, she'd already winched about six other guys before me. So I was well, like, yeah. good on her. And then, you know, it was like... Oh, did that factor into your reasoning for no one today, or...? We're winch positive on this podcast. <laughs> I'm not trying to winch shame this... <laughs> <laughs> this wee clown bitch. <laughs> There's a lot of other guys before me. It, that, that, that wasn't the thing that put me off. I just felt it felt like it was too young. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't getting pingers at that age. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> was that covered in the blather? <laughs> <laughs> that was the point my mom turned it off <laughs> I've heard enough um, so yeah uh, they were like I used to get a future that happened and then she was like oh his technique was shite of course it is, is. That what they of say? course it is yeah I've done it before go. It's, like, it's like a fish because <laughs> <laughs> she's got six under her belt she's a exactly. she's an older more mature exactly. she's seen the world this girl she's experienced yeah she's i do day. i do remember that like people's tech you know, winching technique would technique. get criticized like because <laughs> <laughs> match of the day <laughs> <laughs> she's got to do better there for me for me dion <laughs> 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 Drawing lines around it on the fucking <laughs> <laughs> wide open there. <laughs> uh, but no, so the I guess people would say, oh, it's like a washing machine and all that. People would say uh, sometimes, but there's no real, you know, it's no guidebook. There's no guidebook. No you know? people are in a different thing, especially when you're ten and a a tent and yeah. Loch Goyle head. <laughs> <laughs> but what you meant to do? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> for uh, for example, for example, yeah, that's <laughs> off no, the top of my head. Do you know I am? Um, so I actually did break mine in between. It was the summer between primary seven and first year. Like a liar doing it in the summer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it was, yeah. uh, it was just, it was like at least uh, I had witnesses. <laughs> no, well, I was it's like kind of like the registrar. You want it? You need two witnesses <laughs> to see to verify. <laughs> it was like my. My mom is like a uh, pal. It was her daughter. Like, it was her daughter, so all kind of same age as me. We were at their house, and they had pals over. And one of them's like a couple of years ahead of me, and her pal wanted to get off me, so she was like two years older. Class. And we went and done it, and then and it was good to get it out of the bed. Didn't he actually really fancy her, but it was good to get it done. Get one under your belt <laughs> because I could have done it earlier, right? But what had happened was sure you could. Like a bit. I don't know how long it was. Maybe say it was the previous summer. Well, this is in between primary seven, primary. In, in first year, whatever age you're then. So I was younger than you, was I? I think yeah. I was the oldest then. I'm a fucking loser. Oh, what a nerd. But what happened to me? Were you a normal age, were you? <laughs> uh, I think I'd have been like 13, I think. Oh, yeah. God, that's, that's creep. Well, what happened with me? I was, I was evidently, I was too young, right? <laughs> and they like, with the first time I, I tried, because basically it was a lassie who lived in the corner, and her, it was a lassie across the road, and her pal lived in the corner, and her pal fancied me, apparently, right? So we thought, right, we'll go in a. Uh, We'll go and get half with each other. I, told, I feel like I might have told this story. I'm oh, like, already. all right, we'll go and get half with each other. That's a good <laughs> plan. <laughs> so you set up like a, right, this is when it's happening. And went in my mate's back garden and it's like, all my mates and her pals are there watching. Mm. It was a nice. big thing. That it, was a, it was like yeah. a watch party back then. <laughs> so we go to <laughs> there. <laughs> but I, I didn't know like what, the finale how you kissed. I just thought you, <laughs> yeah, I just thought you kissed with your lips yeah so, so she's like called trying... vt is it no <laughs> <laughs> exactly so I, i'm just trying to kiss with my mouth closed and she's pure what the fuck you doing so you had bad technique i know? didn't even have it to the point where i didn't even break my vl because i never opened my mouth <laughs> so she was like licking your lost on the technicality <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the outside of your lips she was yeah. trying to lick she was just forcing her tongue i in guess and... that's what happened then there was a big you know there's a crowd there and the crowd are dispersed it's like you know after a home team loses a game everybody <laughs> leaves early slinks off yeah. and uh, we i can never... see you walking <laughs> and it was a shame because like she was like i think i really fancied her at the time and i was a bit kind of like intimidated because she was like a year older and you know more experienced than that. No, last year always seem more experienced anyway, and uh, and I just pure girls just always seem so older than you. Yeah, at that age, right? yeah. 
So I was just embarrassed because I didn't know how to do it. But then how the fuck would I have known? I was like 10 or something maybe, I don't know. So was that that was the time that you could have done it and then you done it with someone that I you didn't it. fancy? So, someone to get it under your belt? Yeah. And how did that happen? Was that in front of a crowd? That was at a, a, the Wassie's house that we were at. Their mom and dad must have been away so they were having like a wee party with some pals. Um, and then like it was like she wants to get a few go up the stairs into the, the room the cupboard and, was it? And, and just in the bedroom and then we just kissed on the bed and that was that lovely on the bed that's aye I mean it was but it was like before you would even yeah before you would even <laughs> think yeah but we, were, we, were, we were like what like, sitting up on the bed it wasn't even like you wouldn't even know lying down on a bed is like a thing <laughs> that you could date. Like, <laughs> we are not a person you know what I mean like so aye so that was it so there's no way and, you know it was just when it happened to be before I got my first kiss I was probably about eight or something there was a wee lass it was like <laughs> she wants to see your bum <laughs> <laughs> knock knock who's there <laughs> bare, bare penis bare penis <laughs> uh, and she was like uh, I'll give you. What do you mean? She was like, "Can she see your bum? I'll give you twenty p if she can see your bum." So I went in the back of my started your fucking showbiz career. Trust the shit. Yeah. Went in the back of my shed, showed her my wee arse, and got twenty p. Only Steve would actually do it though. <laughs> People have already putting on that they can make you do anything they want if they just ask. That, that was four Freddos back then. Jesus Christ. I was going to Hope say your agent's what? listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, get his the guy they say, oh, did he need to take 5p? <laughs> 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 that's, that's cut. <laughs> but I don't know, it's weird though, because like, you would think we guys would be more like sexually charged at that age, but that's we lassie wanted to see an arse, and she was about eight. And she fucking did as well. <laughs> she, she got a full... Specifically your arse. Um, oh, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was like probably just pulled my scans down a wee bit, wasn't I? Spreading cheeks or anything, do you know what I mean? But I just hold you. <laughs> oh, he's going red. Oh. I can't believe you did it. There's no way I found me. I'm getting my ass out to some girl. It's just no Look, way. Just a Inconceivable. Wee... Just like pulled pulled on your wee pants. So like mooning. I'd it's rather like find twenty p in the playground. You I'd wouldn't rather... do it. No. I... Or back then, either. <laughs> yeah. you... uh, for, to get my ass out for twenty p now, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> <Inflation. for saying. laughs> you wouldn't do that back then. Do you know what I did? <laughs> oh God! Here we go. <laughs> I've never told this story to anyone. None of this is going to make the edit. <laughs> oh God! So I've never spoke to this guy about this. That we what done this. this <laughs> I'm dreading it. I don't know. I, I was definitely under 10 because I was in my old house. So I, I honestly think probably about eight or something as well. And I guess my mom must have went out of the shops or whatever. It was just me and him in. And for some reason, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure, by the way, this was his fucking suggestion, by the way, right? <laughs> but for some reason, we both got naked. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and, and like, we both like, took turns at like, <laughs> So I bend over. <laughs> each of us kissed the other one and gave a wee peck on the cheek. <laughs> the, the arse cheek of the other. <laughs> and there was the, like. It wasn't even like sexual or anything, it was just like, I don't even know. Posh play. <laughs> just sort of like. It's just a laugh. <laughs> just a laugh. It's just two boys having a laugh. There's nothing wrong with that. Feel it, eh? I just felt like, you kissed me on the bum and I'll be eating. What's that guy up to these days? <laughs> Is that the guy with the BB gun? <laughs> that was before he could suck his own dick. <laughs> That's like first base is uh, pecking another boy's ass. Yeah. Second base sucking your dick. Oh god, oh my. I just think I don't know. Like, firstly, I'd like to say I'm not surprised you've never told anyone that. Before. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Fuck me. Fuck me. Was it a good experience? <laughs> what would you recommend? I, I think I honestly maybe just blocked it out. <laughs> 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 
We guys are weird. We them? guys are fucking weird. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I would I guess... never have been able to predict in a million years what I was going by. Like, even when you got naked, there's no way. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck is this, man? It was just like, I don't know, like... <laughs> uh, well, it's really sweet, know, really. What's the aftermath of that? Do you just put your back clothes on, back on? And then and just he... back to watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> and that pretty much was it, eh? Uh, amazing what were you missed do you ever kiss ever done arse? that <laughs> I've kissed an arse yeah <laughs> but no. very different circumstances <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about 13 had a wee girlfriend on the beach classic oh, named it naked named it bent and over <laughs> yeah, man, no you witnesses you, you've just had a normal life what, what I'm a fuck? pretty normal guy what the fuck man You've never had any traumatic experiences, you want to share? I mean, I'm worried now that I have blocked stuff out. Because yeah. I remember, obviously, nothing like that. Not to, not to kink shame, but nothing like that. But I do remember that feeling of, like, before you know what anything is, yeah. you're so naive, yeah. but you're also curious, and you're also horny. You <laughs> get like, weird it weird. leads to really weird scenarios. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember me and a couple of pals found a fucking, like, this. Is, <laughs> we found a porno DVD washed up on the shore. <laughs> <laughs> Still what? It was like from Holland. I don't know if it actually come. It's probably, <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone had probably just fucking yeah, watched it. Surely in it's not. In mind, it's like a fucking, you know, like a bottle with a parchment in it or whatever. Like, it's come from Holland. That's a gift. And we used to stash it in a bush, and then we used to all just go and look at it. And we'd like visit just it. The, the case? Just the case, no, no <laughs> desk. It? Just the front and the back. Did, did it have a desk things? in it? You what? Did it have a desk no, in it? No, because we'd be watching the fucking desk. Was it graphic on the case? Oh, it was, it was titties. Did titties it? front, titties back. Yeah. That's the three cool. little squares at the bottom. You'd wonder, I wonder what those DVDs extras are, you know? <laughs> just letting your imagination run wild. Yeah, we just visit it. Yeah, we no. we bought a, a nuts magazine once when we were wee. We managed to get our hands on it, and I had it, I had, <laughs> it, in a, hands on it. <laughs> had it in a poly bag and a bush down in the glen, and uh, we'd every so often just go and have a wee look at it. Yeah, because for like older comedians, I was like, oh, book back it, mad. We had to go <laughs> in bushes. And, like, so did we. I know. So well, the, that is, we were the people true. putting them in the bushes. Or, we, <laughs> we are arguably the last generation, maybe, to have that though, because we. Remember that time before it was on yeah. the internet, whereas it much more happen, cheeky yeah. and innocent. Yeah, and then we were also getting like Bluetooth videos of like horses shagging folk. And, this is true, and Aye. on fucking Sony Ericsson's and shit. Yeah, we yeah. we were you know, the, the first generation. Lids to... off the bottle now. <laughs> yeah, we were the first generation to get all that. I suddenly that DVD covers not as exciting. Yeah, you? yeah, exactly. <laughs> You've been exposed to two girls, one cup. Or <laughs> <laughs> Nothing cheeky about that. No. But I think those girls have kissed bums. <laughs> I think there's something quite sweet about just having a wee look, though. It's, yeah, because that's what it swatch, was. It was just yeah. like having a look. You weren't like doing it, and it was just like, oh. I... It's always more scary if anything as well when you'd see it and you'd be like, oh, what is that? You know, like. Aye, aye. The first time I seen a fanny, God, <laughs> online. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared man. I was like Jesus what did, you, what did you think it was the this guy crops up this guy it can't has, he be that fucking guy again? he, show, he, he showed me he, he was like one of my best pals back in the day so he was always I'd love like, it if this guy turned out to be an imaginary friend <laughs> <laughs> that I've had to, to cope with all these horrible you're, experiences you're Tyler Durden now <laughs> yeah. end of the movie the camera pans and he's just talking to himself that's it <laughs> I'm this guy looking like shit. Brad Pitt by any chance? Uh... <laughs> so this guy, I Google Images typed in Fanny. <laughs> <laughs> Save search off. Save search off. First hang, big hairy Fanny. So like, look at that. I was Just like, got you ordered, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at the time, I think it was like. I'll jump out the room. You can have a look at it for a while if you Give want. Give me some privacy. Give me some privacy. It's quite, quite it's nice. not what Mark's friend was doing. <laughs> <laughs> quite the opposite, actually. But yeah, it was just it was hot. I was like, Jesus, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it made me feel weird. <laughs> Never been the same since. <laughs> <laughs> Never recovered, but... Uh... Yeah, I remember me and my pal Neil watching 
porn just like because but it was back in that day of like before like this is another difference of like kids now at least you know they've got it on their phones and shit like that or at least, but like when like the computer room was a thing or like his family computer was like in like his kitchen basically yeah so like the fucking mall's running about and you're just like yeah, you minimize. you've just got yeah like you've, yeah. yeah yeah it's like a whole thing it's like stressful it's like yeah. a mission impossible movie or something but you're just like, clicking at a photo of a family on the screen <laughs> <laughs> I remember on MSN Messenger once right and it was like no that way sometimes you would get sent like a link and it would be like the Rick Roll or something like that right yeah. <laughs> fucking uh, my mate sent me this link and I clicked it and then I went into the I went into the kitchen to get like a juice or something and I came back out and my gran was watching me that day and she was like oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> lemon he'd sent, pot no no it was the other <laughs> he sent me just this big thing like I think it was like a guy getting shagged up the arse and while he's getting shagged it was just like I saw it wasn't that same z- friend was it because I no. think he's trying to tell you something <laughs> <laughs> that zoom in on the crotch so all you seen is this big dick that was getting shagged swinging a boot do you know what I mean like, and it was just and it's like she's just like oh, oh what the fuck is this and I'd, like, I'd obviously just clicked and then by the time it loaded up I didn't know the kitchen came back no realising what I did just, you say to her it's not know, your grand that had a heart attack last week, is it? <laughs> is I think it might be a delayed reaction. To... <laughs> She's already right, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Pre pre pod. <laughs> um, I wish this wasn't what this podcast was, but here we are. It's I funny, think isn't it? it's great. Yeah, I think it's healthy to get out. Some sex of your... positive on this podcast. I actually yeah, feel uh, wrong with that. I feel Nothing good to have actually told get that off your chest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like been weighing you down. I can for years. Just a confusing memory from times that I've never articulated. It's fucking funny. Is there any other topics we can move on to? So where do you go for there? Yeah, it's one of those clunky gear changes, isn't it? Philosophical question. <laughs> <laughs> if an arse is bare in the woods and no one's around to see it. <laughs> I'm never going to go over that. I'm just going to keep thinking about it during the day. <laughs> you see this thing about the fucking uh, the Lu Fung in oh, uh, Sucky Hall Street, is it? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, you're just next like to Nice and Sleazy's and it's... It's meant to be a it's Chinese spies operating out of it. So it says, the Chinese government has been accused of opening up more than 50 secret police stations across the globe, including one in Glasgow operating at the address of a popular Chinese restaurant. I'm here for a look. It is claimed that the stations are being used to carry out persuasion operations, which coerce people who criticise the Chinese government. A, a Home Office spokesman said, reports of undeclared police stations in the UK are of course very concerning and will be taken extremely seriously. Any foreign country operating on UK soil must abide by UK law. First of all, let me ask you, have you ever been to the... I've always I've passed been, it. No. I've never liked the look of the place. I've never heard anyone ever talk about it. Yeah. No. It's, yeah, it's when that came out that it was probably Chinese spies or something, I was like, that makes Checks sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't think I've ever seen anyone in it. No, no, it's just... It's, it doesn't look very appeasing whatsoever. Apparently that Desert's place is owned by the Russians as well. Is it? It's <laughs> just obviously a front for something, I don't know. Fucking Pepe's Perry Perry man. God, I hate to think you could God. be the cartel. I know. I but... can't talk about that one because I'm involved in the <laughs> Perry Perry. Yeah, pulling the strings from behind the scenes. <laughs> You're like the Gustavo Fring. Yeah. It's... Mark won't know that reference. Uh, I don't. Breaking Bad. Yeah. Uh, Chris McAvoy boy did a good point about that. He says if it is, then it would make sense because the uh, nice and sleazy toilets look like they're used for torture yeah. and all that. They're and actually, are bad. Yeah. you put up a thing the other day, and I totally agree with it. What is going on with that style of bathroom? Yeah, so see the the, yeah. the, the toilets. It's kind of like the that worst toilet in the world thing from Train Spotting. Mm. It's mm. like they silver toilet seats. Silver, and then you get the black. So I guess it. Is that the seat? I yeah, the seat's know like a wee black rim. It just looks like it doesn't have a toilet Sometimes seat. they don't have, in nice and yeah, season, I'm don't. sure they don't no. have a rim on it. No, no, no. Just it's assumed, unacceptable. I just assume people would like rip the, them off, like it was vandalism. Yeah, no, but that's is like that a, a style, that I think, a because that, the one I took a photo of was in, I think it was in the venue I was in in Aberdeen. Aye. And it's like a nice bar. And then you go to the toilet and you're like, what the fuck is going on? Aye, oh. as you say, completely unacceptable in this day and age. Maybe a civilised society. Horrible silver toilets. The, the nicest that. toilets I've uh, been into is the Revolution de Cuba. All right. Every, at any time I, I was on a yes bar, I'd go around the corner there to, to do my business. Is that right? <laughs> it was great, great toilets. Do they know you in there? Like, oh, this is the guy that comes into their <laughs> shit every Wednesday. <laughs> are, they, are they nice in there? Ah, uh, lovely, eh? I've never been in there. Spacious, right? clean. You always need a good place to... 
like a good public place, you know. I used to always go to that one in Edinburgh on the fringe. It was a uh, what's that place called? It's oh, um, fucking that restaurant, the Italian restaurant. Yes, the Italian one. Because what? Because hangy hangy thought North it was or I Ch- Chow Roma. Ch- uh, Chow Roma. C- 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 Roma. Roma. <laughs> that someone thought it was called. No, I had to point out. Do you know that's Chow Roma? <laughs> um, I used to go there, and it was funny though because there's this particular show on every night where I would go in there. They go to the bathroom and I would just hear the exact same bit of a That's show funny. every night. <laughs> I don't go to the bathroom. Oh, it's a rough crowd tonight. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, you gave me that uh, suggestion and I went a couple of times. Aye. It was quite good. It was good, didn't so it? doesn't compare to Revolution to Cuba. Though. No. Monkey but... Bell's my, my toilet of choice at the fringe. Yeah, so now. Four individual stalls. However, you've got the big queue. you got to time it so Larry And you've no get the anonymity. Yeah. You've no get the anonymity there. That's true. You need to go yeah. in. Somebody sees you get in. They'd see when you come out. Like, oh, I'm not that worried about that. I don't... Yeah. No, no, you don't care. I don't think people are like, oh, there's Stuart. He's going no. into the toilet. I'll time him. <laughs> <laughs> but I must He's say, been in there twenty minutes. I, I must say though, like, get back to that. Honestly, like it is ridiculous that in this day and age, like you know, you've got these horrible toilets that, like especially if you're going to want to kiss an arse cheek after, like exactly. I am, because. <laughs> After where you've been. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, see if we'd been in a public toilet when that wee guy asked me to kiss his ass, I wouldn't have been doing it at all. Like, fuck it, fuck, fuck that. It. <laughs> have you ever had to go in like a nightclub or or like a like, nice and sleazy or whatever? Yeah. I probably have, just statistically, but obviously you'd avoid it at all costs. Yeah, avoid it at all costs. The only time I've had to, really had to, was at the Bully one time. Oh, did you? Clyde Bank nightclub upstairs. Yeah. And the rave Is that where yeah. Mark shot himself with it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's where I went after it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had to go, and it my cunt banging on the door. The oh, fuck you doing in there, you cunt? I'm, he was wanting to do gear, basically. Yes. He was like, why are you doing Why are you not using the toilets for the only thing they're mm. meant to be used gear. for here? And gear. the bouncers were getting suspicious because I was so long, <laughs> so long, well, more than five minutes or whatever. Aye, I was pure peering over the top. Like, what are you doing in there? Yeah. No, it's bad. Well, a guy's trying to sell aftershave like <laughs> five feet for you. <laughs> Sleep shit's driving sales of the aftershave. <laughs> no Armani, no banana. <laughs> <laughs> so I had been told years ago, right, it's a guy for, that I went to uni with, like we were in a night out once and he told me this story and like swore down it was like, this happened to his mate about going into... Been a, his mate was in a nightclub, he really needed to go to the, the bathroom. No, he needed to puke. And then he runs in, opens a opens a cubicle door, and there's a guy sitting there on the toilet and he pukes all over him. And then he doesn't know what to do, so he punches him in the face and runs away. What, the guy who whites? The guy what? who whites, because the guy's about to bat him, and then so he punches him in the face. And for years, like, I'd believed him. And then, do you know what it was in? I think I've heard of this. It was in Fleabag. Oh, she so. tells that story in Fleabag right. and I'm like ah, I thought that happened to Kev <laughs> <laughs> man Kev I went to uni he told me that story as if it happened to fucking his mate but this happened like at, before Fleabag was out oh or? years before right and so then, it's just a mad story um, that people... I was an apocryphal yeah. story or whatever and so it must just be one of them and then she's of, kind of she's yeah. an urban myth and she's turning it for Fleabag and, you, and then or maybe I don't know maybe it did happen to somebody there's a few of those kind of stories yeah. that always go about, like, heard there's always one that's like a guy at a house party shat in like the Lurpak tub and then, have you heard that one? <laughs> no. no. And it's like, puts oh, the, no, the butter over this. the top and put it in the fridge and people oh. don't know about it, but I think that's one the of The one I always hear is the one, uh, like, a, I'll get this wrong, but it's like a, a girl's round at a guy's house and she goes back with him and then yeah. does a the shit, it doesn't flush, so she bags up the shit and she's like, right, I'll take it out of me, puts in her handbag, goes to leave writes a note at the door, closes the door behind her and then realises that she's left the bagged shit on the table at the front door. Oh, all right. When she popped it down when she was writing the note and then she's just locked her shit in this guy's. Yeah. So that's the one I've, I've heard the most, I'd say. I had an embarrassing thing a couple of years ago. It was, um, so for New Year, we'd all, me and I, like, our mate and like, all his pals, every year they would go to, they'd go somewhere for New Year and this year they happened to go up to Edinburgh. So I was like, oh, I'll come, that'll be good. So it was the last big house and it was about 20s or there or something like that. And it's guys and lasses, whatever. And I don't know some of them. I know a few of them, but and there's a, a few Americans and English cunts now that I don't know. So pure good night and all that sort of stuff, right? In the morning, I go to the bathroom, right? Do my business. And then the toilet doesn't flush. 
and so I'm like, oh my god, and I'm like, there's only one toilet in this whole place, and I've been in, and it's before MD's really up, like New Year's Day, and I'm like, fuck, so like, I'm, I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do, this is going to be so embarrassing if everybody finds out I've blocked the toilet on it, so like, pure, just try to like, get, like, get in with the fucking, you know, brush. with the brush, and then, you know, I think I ended up getting like a jug, and I had to like, try and but fucking get it's all like the things out. And it was, yeah, it was like a <laughs> task and like the door, the front door is right next to it. So I was like getting some of the water and then like chucking it out the door and all that stuff and like oh, having God. to just having to do the most horrible stuff <laughs> uh, in a toilet to try and unclog happy this year, bit. <laughs> fucking happy New Year. The first thing I did and I started the new <laughs> new year it started as you mean yeah. to go on, do you know what I mean? I'm fucking Try to fucking unblock a toilet, Is basically. That the year going into 2020. That was a, a, <laughs> Not a, was a was sign of times to come. <laughs> like 2018 or something. 20, 20, uh, 2018 or something. And uh, so I do, I done that, and I was honestly about half an hour, 45 minutes. I'm pure sweating, and it's pure horrible, and I'm just getting. Oh, it's just manky. And eventually, I just I managed to get it enough to to sort it. And I come out, and I'm like, oh my god, and I'm like, thank god, nobody's. Safe. And I'm, the whole time, I'm worried somebody's going to wake up, and then they'll know I've been in, and then if it's no fix, blah blah. blah. And then I said, and I said to one of my mates, Chris was there, and I, I said to him, oh my God, it's so embarrassing. I've, I'm in the toilet, oh, I blocked it this morning, and I spent about an hour fucking trying to fix it. And he went, oh, that was blocked last night. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, are you joking? But I was just so mortified. And then I spent all that time. Is that not happening like Dumb and Dumber or something? Like they, <laughs> they try and... No, that's in Fleabag as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know, probably it does. Fleabag's actually. basically a shot for shot remake of Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> the, the female lead. <laughs> Anyway, right, Dude, that mate. has been a bit of a mad episode today. <laughs> <laughs> all over the shop. All over the shop, but hey, <laughs> that's what we like. Uh, just before we go, uh, just please remember to like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, and you can give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify if you're listening as well. You can follow us at SomeLaughPod on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, and if you'd like to email us with anything, it is SomeLaughPod at gmail.com. Um, before we go, uh, guys, Comedy Festival coming up in March. Stuart, you have got your stand up show. Wednesday, the 22nd of March at the stand, Glasgow, 9 pm. Tickets on. Come and see it. Tickets on sale now. Yes. And I'm at King's Fear in Glasgow, uh, Friday, 24th of March. Please come and see me and Stuart uh, doing our stand up show as um, well. Not doing Glasgow, I'm doing Leicester. If I've got any fans in Leicester, I'm doing Leicester in February. What are you doing? French show? Uh, yeah, I'm doing a work in progress in Leicester. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the date. Is it half three in the afternoon? <laughs> Go and see Good enough. as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, guys, thanks very much for tuning in, and we'll speak to you very soon. Have a nice week. Cheers, guys. Cheers.